Welcome to the channel and this is a new decade build for my decade build series. If you haven't seen the other ones, you can definitely check those out. I'll provide a link to that down below as well as in the top right corner. But yeah, we're, we're in the latter part of the 60s. So I wanted to do something a little different. I guess I could have done like a hippie van or something, but uh, I felt like this might be a little realistic as far as homes go and uh, what I wanted to portray. So basically I wanted to do like a mobile home and mobile homes were pretty popular uh, starting in the 50s up until the 70s. Obviously there's still mobile homes out there today. So I just wanted to do something I haven't done before and do something a little bit uh, different and fun and I thought this would be the perfect thing to do and then just like hippie explosion. <laughs> so in the second half of the 1960s, young people started to revolt against the conservative norms of the time as well as remove themselves from mainstream liberalism. In particular, the high level of materialism which was so common during that era uh, this created like a counterculture that sparked a social revolution throughout much of the world. It began in the U.S. as a reaction against the conservatism and social conformity of the 50s, and the U.S. government's uh, long military intervention in Vietnam. The youth involved in the movement became known as hippies. These groups created a movement toward liberation in society, including the sexual revolution, questioning authority in government, and demanding more freedoms and rights for women and minorities. The movement was also marked by the first widespread socially accepted drug use, which included LSD and marijuana use, typically, and it also created a subculture of psychedelic music, uh, things like Jimi Hendrix, for example, was kind of brought from this era in this culture. Beginning in the mid-50s and continuing into the late 60s, African Americans in the U.S. aimed at outlawing racial discrimination against Black Americans and restoring voting rights to them. After the events of the Selma to Montgomery marches, the National Voting Rights Act of 1965 was lobbied for and then signed into law by President Lyndon B. Johnson. The Voting Rights Act outlawed discriminatory voting practices that had caused the widespread disenfranchisement of African Americans in the U.S. After 1966, with the draft in place, more than 500,000 troops were sent to Vietnam by the Johnson administration in college attendance Sword. In 1968, Martin Luther King Jr., who was an incredible civil rights leader and activist, was assassinated by James Earl Ray in Memphis, Tennessee. Another unrest, in a way, uh, during this time, the Stonewall Riots occurred in June 1969 in New York City. The Stonewall Riots were a series of spontaneous and violent demonstrations against a police raid that took place in the Stonewall Inn in Greenwich Village, in the Greenwich Village neighborhood of New York City. They are frequently cited as the first instance in American history when people in the homosexual community fought back against a government sponsored system that persecuted sexual minorities. And because of their efforts, they have become the defining event that marked the start of the gay rights movement in the U.S. and also around the world. It wasn't all bad and scary though. On twentieth, on the 20th 
of July 1969, Apollo 11, the first human space flight, landed on the moon, which launched on the 16th of July 1969. It carried Mission Commander Neil Armstrong, Command Module Pilot Michael Collins, and the Lunar Module Pilot Buzz Aldrin. Apollo 11 fulfilled President John F. Kennedy's goal and dream of reaching the moon by the end of the 1960s. So unfortunately, uh, as I said in my previous video, uh, John F. Kennedy was assassinated in the early 60s, so he wasn't able to see um, the U.S. land on the moon for the first time. So as far as mobile homes go, in the United States, the form of housing goes back to the early years of cars and highway travel. It was created from the travel trailer, which is often referred to uh, during those early years as house trailers or trailer coaches. A small unit with wheels, which was attached permanently, often used for camping or extended travel. The original rationale for this type of housing was its mobility and units were initially marketed primarily to people whose lifestyle required that kind of mobility and, you know, being able to move anywhere, anytime they'd like. However, beginning in the 1950s, the homes began to be marketed primarily as an inexpensive form of housing designed to be set up and left in a location for long periods of time or even permanently if they wanted, um, and if they wanted a permanent housing place or mobile home, uh, they would actually just install a masonry foundation. So previously units had been about 8 feet or less in width, but in 1956 the 10-foot wide home was introduced along with the new term mobile home. During the late 60s and early 70s, the homes were made even longer and wider. Some even had, like, split levels and two stories. I mean, they are pretty much like a regular home nowadays. And, you know, they have all the amenities that you would ever need and everything. But they were just cheaper to manufacture. So it was a better option for a lot of lower income people. So right now I'm working on the dining room and um, I wanted it to be kind of separated from the living area so I actually used one of the screens. I think it came with the vintage glamour stuff pack but I thought it fit pretty nicely and of course you know the really amazing posters that came with City Living were perfect for this type of thing. Yeah, this is a pretty simple build. I mean, there's not like anything really elaborate with it, but I had a lot of fun building it and just kind of thinking about the type of people that live here. And of course, I had to add the bubble blower. <laughs> it's the only um, allusion to drug use in the game, so had to put it in there. They wouldn't be hippies without it. Now, a lot of hippies were actually on the lower end of things, so that's where the whole idea for hippie vans came in. A lot of people just lived in their cars or on, like, communes, kind of. Like, almost like a little village, almost. And they would just live together and... um it was very much like, you know, just live freely and live off the land or, um, you know, live together. That was kind of the whole premise of the hippie movement was to come away from the excess and the materialism that so often was pushed on people in the 50s. So they wanted to, you know, get back to their roots, live a more simple life. Uh, so that's kind of, you know, the whole idea of the hippie movement. I read somewhere that hippies from the 60s are actually kind of like the predecessor for the hipsters of today. Um, so it's kind of like the same idea almost, you know, not wanting to be mainstream, wanting to come away from, 
you know, regular conventions that society has. And yeah, I, I think that I can definitely see how they would correlate, how they would influence the hipster movement of today. So for this place, I imagined uh, two roommates lived here, maybe a guy and a girl, and they're in a band together. Music was such an important part of the 60s as well as the 70s, but um, I think the 60s was pretty famous for their music because it influenced so much more than, you know, what they had. And a lot of the music that was popular in the late 60s and also the early 60s too, but a lot of it was very politically charged and they often used music to speak out against the things they disagreed with, like the Vietnam War, social social injustices, and things like that. Here I was having a hard time because I really wanted a lava lamp, but... <laughs> um, I couldn't find anything that resembled a lava lamp, so I just used the little mid-century lamps that came with the bowling pack because they kind of have that feel. And of course, I had to add some psychedelic artwork throughout the place. Um, I think this is a really cute build, even if, you know, your Sims aren't in the 1960s per se, but maybe they are a little hippie or you know, bohemian, I think this would fit um, that type of sim pretty well. So this build is available on the gallery, and also I wanted to tell you guys something uh, that I found out today. So I noticed that a lot of my older builds, like from a while ago, well not a lot, maybe some, but uh, for example, my goth um, house that I first made when I started that LP, it's like completely gone and off the gallery and I can't find it in my library. So I'm not sure why that is and I've been trying to reach out to the sim gurus about it uh, because it's really strange. I don't remember deleting it off of my library so I'm kind of worried about it and I'm thinking about just backing up my tray files, like just in case that happens again. So if you guys see something of mine, like on my channel, but don't see it in the gallery, please let me know. Um, because sometimes it's just in my library and sometimes it's not. <laughs> so yeah, just let me know if you guys don't see a build that you'd like to download and it's not there. Uh, because typically I share everything on the gallery. So yeah, just wanted to let you guys know about that. Of course, I had to add some big flowers to uh, one of the rooms. That's the girl's room, and the other one is for the guy. But yeah, I, I had so much fun with this build. <laughs> I even played with them like a little bit after the fact. Yeah, guys, that's pretty much the build. I'm just going to be adding a few little lights here and there and some landscaping, but I hope you learned something new, and I hope that uh, you enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys next week. Next week, we're going to be starting on uh, the 1970s, so that's exciting. Yeah, thanks again for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye, guys! <laughs>